Hey guys, welcome back to Top Speed Golf. In today's video, we're going to talk about a very detailed description of what the shoulders do in the golf swing. Now, I took both a face on and a down the line view of Adam Scott. I think he's got some of the best shoulder movements in the swing and one of the best overall swings in the history of the game. Really beautiful swing. We're going to talk about a lot of detail every single piece of this. Now, this isn't this video isn't to be taken as you need to go out and work on every single little tiny piece of this but it is to help to clear some misconceptions that some people may have that are hurting them from getting a bigger turn or to getting the shoulders to work properly throughout the golf swing so we're going to get really really detailed and it's more of just gathering information than it is to say okay you need to go and work on these 20 things that we mentioned so keep that in mind uh, this is going to help to get an overall idea or better picture of how the the shoulders work in the swing uh, but don't try to go out to the range and, and work on every single piece of this all at once. So let's take a look at a dress here. We're seeing that his shoulders are nice and square to the target. Ideally, we'd like that to, ha that to happen. Since his body is slightly tilted away, so you can see his upper body is slightly tilted back away from the target, that's going to put, and since his, also his right hand is lower on the club than his left hand, that's going to give him just a very slight tilt in the shoulders. Now, we wouldn't want to go more than this, and get a, a lot of tilt, that means that we would have the right arm more bent and we may be put, getting too much forward shaffling on the club. Several things could happen there. And we wouldn't want to get the shoulders too level because that may mean that our upper body is leaning more toward the target and going to make it difficult to get loaded up in the backswing and get our weight shift to the right side. Now if we start from the down the line view, let's go back from the beginning again. We're going to notice that the, the overall posture, let's actually draw a line on that. And we're just talking very general here. We're not looking at exact angles or anything like that. But the overall posture is going to remain pretty constant with the spine. So the overall general angle that the spine is rotating in is going to be about the same. You can see as it gets to the top of the swing that the overall tilt of the body has maintained pretty, pretty constant. So slight, slight changes, but not a big deal there at all. Now at the top of the swing, what we're going to notice here is that the body's still leaning forward and that the shoulders have gotten good rotation but they've also stayed in their posture and I'll explain what I mean by this. So if you draw a line from the right shoulder to the left shoulder right through the center of them that should hit somewhere between let's say four and eight feet roughly outside of your golf ball. If you're going with more of a driver it's going to be a little flatter a little farther outside the golf ball it's going to look more like that. If you're going with more of a pitching wedge it's going to be a little bit steeper. Now if we look at this from face on, what we'll see is the same thing is happening. Now he's gotten a weight shift to the right, so his body has loaded up a little bit. His nose, if you were to draw a line down to the ground, that would be loaded up to the right side. So the shoulders do have, or the, the upper body, the spine has a tilt away from the target as he goes to the top. To get that good full turn like we see here, he's, he's gotten well over a 90 degree turn. A couple things have to happen. Number one, the hips need to rotate. We've got to get those hips rotating as we can see in both screens. They rotate about 45 degrees. And we have to feel like the lead shoulder, the left shoulder for him, is protracting. Or if you're looking at it from this way, it feels like it's stretching out away from the, from the body. So if you look at the, your back of your left shoulder, that's what's called your scapula, and that is stretching out away. That shoulder's protracting or moving away from the target. If you're looking from this angle, the left shoulder would be moving kind of toward the camera. The opposite is happening with the right shoulder. That right shoulder is what's called retracting, which means the scapula is moving in toward the center of your, of your spine. That's going to really stretch you out. Now, when those two things happen together, along with the the turn of the overall torso you're going to get a big shoulder turn so really big shoulder turn there we can see that the shirt buttons on his chest would be facing directly back toward the camera they could even go a little bit farther than that uh, for some players who really want to get wound up so if you look at dustin johnson he's going to turn even more than that with his shoulders so the shoulder turn is a combination of the hips rotating letting those hips rotate letting the torso rotate or your rib cage rotate and then adding to that protraction of the lead arm, retraction of the right, the, the, the back arm, the right arm. And when you put all three of those pieces together, that's when you get this really big turn, this really big loading up. And as I mentioned, he stayed in his posture, so this shoulder is staying down. This shoulder is feeling like it's going a little bit up. And you can see how the, the back shoulder is higher than the front shoulder as he gets to the top of his swing. So as we do this, 
in the downswing, what's going to happen is we're going to simply reverse that and turn around this pretty stable spine angle. It will change a little bit, but not too much. As you go into contact, actually let's pause once before that. I can mention some things here halfway down. As the lead arm gets about halfway down, you'll see how now the hips are opening up. They're leading the way and we still have that separation between the hips and the shoulders. The shoulders are still back halfway down, the hips are leading the way, and they're keeping their angle uh, pretty well. Now as you get to contact, we're continuing to rotate around that again that overall spine angle is pretty similar to where we were at, at the beginning the right arm is nice and into his body the hips have rotated open now here's a key a key point to to note when you're looking at the swing and the difference between the shoulders and the torso if you look at his shirt buttons or his rib cage you would think that, or you would see that that's pointing about 20 to 30 degrees open same thing here we can see the logo on the back of his shirt up here the rib cage itself or the shirt buttons would be facing you know kind of up here in this area around the cart path maybe just slightly behind that but the shoulders themselves are pretty square right so these shoulders are pretty square there that means the left shoulder is kind of protracted or in against the, the chest the left shoulder is going to feel like it's across your chest as you're coming down to impact the right shoulder is also going to feel like it's kind of cinched into your chest. So both your left and your right shoulder are feeling like they're coming in together as you're coming at contact. See, notice how the right elbow is really tight and, tight and close to his body. That's something that, that's happening when that right shoulder is kind of protracting in. So people talk about staying connected in the golf swing, and that's a big piece of it of what they're feeling is that impact. The right shoulder and the left shoulder are both in to be very, very constant throughout the swing. At the same time, like we talk about in the top speed golf system, we have that stable fluid spine. We have that body tilted back away from the target. The right shoulder is going to be a little lower than the left shoulder, which is exactly how we should be in the swing. Now, the reason I left these two lines up there is for what's going to happen next. As we get these hands about chest high in the follow through, you're going to notice that those shoulders, let's actually go a few frames back. Those shoulders have maintained, again, the spine and the shoulders have maintained their relative posture from where they were at address, from where they were at the top of the swing, from where they were in the follow through here. So we're looking at the shoulders pretty much staying in the same posture. If you wanted to get exact with this, they'll actually be steeper in the follow through. So if we're drawing a line down, that line, if we put a club across our shoulders, should be hitting somewhere in the general vicinity of the ball. It could be at the, you know, the ball was here, Anywhere from just outside the ball to probably three or four feet outside the ball means that you've stayed in your posture really, really nice and rotated on through that shot. So we can definitely see how that's happening. That's happening because there's side bend. So the body's turned sideways. This right shoulder feels like it's down now and the left shoulder feels like it's up. So you may feel nice and long with the left side of your body. You may feel almost crunched in or like you're, you're bending to the right with the right side of your body, which is going to steepen up those shoulders and allow you to stay in your posture. So that's a big key to consistency. In the backswing, through impact, into the follow through, we want to keep those shoulder angles you know, nice and consistent and let the, the arms and the hands and the club rotate around that. If we look at the, that same position as we're going from the face on view, we'll see that the shoulders are back. We don't want them to be chasing way forward. So if you're to draw a line directly down from the, the middle of the shoulders, that's just behind the ball still, where the ball was on the ground. So we don't want our upper body going way forward too early. We gotta stay behind it. And the reason for that is that we can get these this club, this handle of the club to whip upwards to accelerate the club as we're coming through contact. And again, if we look at that, here's the same position in the swing. We can see that the chest is facing the target and also, just like we mentioned, the right shoulder is down. It's switched roles. Now the left shoulder is up. This is the opposite of the backswing. And now the right shoulder is much farther below the left shoulder. So that's really going to help with that. Again, here, you're feeling like not quite yet, but this left shoulder should feel like it's in retraction. It was protracted at contact. It's going to start retracting away from the body. The right shoulder is really protracting here, meaning it's moving forward as much as you can. Now as we finish the swing, we'll take it to the last piece here. All the way into the finish, 
you're going to go ahead and let that the shoulders turn all the way around. If you look at his shirt buttons here, let's go ahead and go to the the full finish, or at least as far as we can go for this video. Sorry, it doesn't go all the way to the end here. We can take it as far as it'll go, though. You'll start to see that his shirt buttons are facing into the left rough. His shirt, the, the buttons on his shirt are probably facing over here toward this tree behind his body. You'll notice that the right shoulder has really come forward. It's rotated all the way through to where it's facing the target. We've stopped a little short of that here. And the left shoulder is rotated back. So he's really let that chest come all the way on through with a good amount of momentum, rotate all the way around. And then one last interesting note here, you'll see that the right shoulder is usually going to finish a little higher than the left shoulder. And that's just saying that's got his body in a position to where he can rotate it on through there. Now, unfortunately, this didn't come around all the way to the end of his swing, but he's going to keep his posture with his spine pretty well. You will straighten up some, but his spine angle is going to be about like that, even when he comes to the full follow through. So those are the key pieces with the shoulders, a little bit more detail uh, than I would normally go into. But I think that will help to clarify some ideas of what is really good shoulder action. What should we be looking for? And to me, I'm looking for some major pieces here. Number one, are we getting that good full turn going back and through? So are the hips rotating? Are the shoulders getting past 90? In the follow through, are we letting those shoulders rotate all the way on around? And, and again, not everybody's gonna be as flexible as Adam Scott, and you, you shouldn't try to be, but just feeling like we get to our maximum uh, you know, stretch going the other way to where we feel like our chest is facing this way, away uh, into the left rough as we finish. So that's a big key. And then the second big key that I really like to focus in on is as you go to the top of the swing, did our chest stay in posture and did our shoulders rotate around our spine throughout the entire swing? So at the top of the swing, coming into contact, coming into the release, are we rotating roughly? This is a very general idea around that overall spine angle and our shoulders staying down in posture. I see tons of players where if we paused them here, their shoulders would look like that, just dead flat, and they'd be coming way up out of their posture. The hips would be sliding forward into the ball, something we call uh, early, uh, early extension, and we'd be losing our posture through there. So work on any of these pieces that stand out to you, that, that look very different, very drastically different from your swing, I recommend getting the overall shape there. It's not about getting every little fine, ti fine and tiny detail perfect, but it's about getting the overall movements, overall shape, and you're going to have a beautiful swing, hopefully as good as Adam Scott's. Good luck. I'll see you guys soon. All right, guys, so now that we've keyed in on the shoulders and the torso, we've got those in a good position, let's add some speed to it, and let's get a lot of lag. We know Adam Scott has tons of lag in his golf swing. We're gonna, I'm going to show you one of my best lag videos as a preview here in a second. If you click the link, I'm going to show you how to build more lag in just a matter of minutes than you've been able to do before. It's going to help to get you more distance. And I'm also going to give you five bonus videos from the Top Speed Golf system. So if you're on a desktop device, go ahead and click the link that pops up on your screen. If you're on a tablet, a mobile phone, go ahead and click the iCard. It's going to get you instant access to all six of those videos. And uh, it'll really help you with your lag help you to get those overall shoulder angles. I'm going to go over the power turn. I'm going to go over a lot of the key pieces that are going to allow you to do these shoulder actions. So good luck, and I'll see you all in the lag video. Hi, guys, and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard, and in today's video, we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see. And in this drill, what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag, and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you, can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case, and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, you look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only going to max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be.